out here in uh, Salt Lake City. Today I'll be doing the Grandeur Peak east uh, from Church Fork. There is construction up there which is really obnoxious because it's right in front of the trailhead. So I'm going to see if I can just park here and walk up there. So sunny and hot when I woke up, maybe half an hour ago. Drive out here which is six minutes, get stuck in this traffic with the construction. Now it's snowing and it's freezing cold so I got all my snow gear. And it's starting to clear again. They're, <laughs> they're cutting a hole in the road <laughs> right where the trailhead is. It's already uh, turning into adventure. hot and it's cold. This has got to come, come off. It's too much. Oh, already sweating. Now it's cold. So I anticipated my body produces a lot of heat and I've now dried out my sun hoodie. It's a little damp but it's gonna get dried out here pretty quick. I've got a bit of a superpower. I generate a lot of heat. This, this uh, power comes from my uh, jiggly belly fat. Let's just call him Siegfried. <laughs> if you're new here, I uh, used to be a trail runner, like a very avid trail runner, 15 kilometers a day, uh, running up mountains, and then my body seized up, turned into concrete. My, my I, so as IT band, all that stuff tightened up to a point where I couldn't move anymore. My sciatica and my uh, IT band pain was just off the charts. I ended up spending over a year, every day almost, in the gym. Uh, testing out different stretches as well as doing a lot of strength training. So when I put on the sun hoodie now, like my goal was to be that same level of leanness where I look good in it. I don't have Siegfried jiggling his lips at me, but uh, at this point I'm just like, whatever. I'm tired worrying about if my belly's a little jiggly. Everyone's got problems. I used to be morbidly obese when I was in probably high school. Um, and then there's three years where I wasn't, I worked out, met some people that got me into shape and then I worked in the video game industry for years and got really fat again. And at a certain point there I just decided I'm not going to be someone who's fat, I'm going to be fit and I work out every day. And for the most part I'm in really good shape. I still end up getting Siegfried with his pursed lips whenever I have a shirt that's a little bit tight. The rest of me looks fine and it's really obnoxious. If you've got an insecurity that's bothering you, I'm sure everyone does, and try naming it, have some fun with it, and uh, try to take the edge off of it. Have a better attitude towards it, then it makes life a little bit better. This is some of the weirdest weather I've ever seen. Hot and sunny, then it turns to snow, back to hot and sunny.
actually about downpour of snow right now. <laughs> it's not that cold, but it was supposed to be sunny and uh, 13, I don't know what it's like, Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's not that, it's snowing. <laughs> it's good to know that the meteorological reports are uh, just as accurate here as they are on Vancouver Island. <laughs> So I'm getting close to the top here, and I'm kind of curious, so from some of the locals around here, um, at least in Alberta and British Columbia, you always yield to the person coming up. So if you're coming down, you make way for the people coming up because they're exhausted and going up. But I've noticed here, so the seven groups kind of looking at me to yield as they were coming down. And I'm just wondering, is that the trail etiquette around here? You always yield to the person going down the mountain and not up. This is pretty wild up here. Sky's opening up blue. Oh my god, I gotta get there quick so I can get some cool drone shots. Uh, see blue sky. So that's my summit up there, Grandeur Peak. This summit's about the same as doing the CPR trail on Vancouver Island. Um, if you're from around Utah here, the CPR is Canadian Pacific Railway Trail, but it goes up to a summit which eventually goes up to Mount Coakley, which is really epic. Um, I've been at Mount Coakley twice, but I don't have a video on it. Uh, I do have one on Mount Aerosmith, which is right there. So if you want to see what that area looks like, you can look up Mount Aerosmith or my CPR video. It's a nice little look at Salt Lake City. It's also a little path that goes up onto that little peak there. This peak has it all. It's got great views of the city. The mountains are opening up over there beside me. Incredible. Racing the weather window here. My heart feels like it's gonna explode out of my chest. It's a bit of a false summit. There's the summit, I'm assuming. Definitely getting to my first uh, big mountain ob objective on my road trip here. This isn't the biggest mountain I've been up. Big interior mountains, almost uh, two and a third times bigger than this and further. So that's a, that one nearly killed me though. But this is still a pretty grueling mountain, no doubt. Hills pay the bills, folks. We're almost there. 50 feet.
Got some really dramatic weather up here. We got snow happening behind me, snow, maybe some rain. We got some sun right on my head. Fantastic. I love it when it's moody like this. It's just so dramatic on uh, camera, especially in the air. So I end up getting up here in two hours and 20 minutes. That's with all my filming, which takes actually quite a bit of time setting up tripods and getting shots and all that kind of stuff. At, uh, 2,681 feet of elevation gain. Uh, and then my kilometers on there, uh, sorry, my watch is in kilometer 6.21 right now. I think that's, yeah, that's kilometers. So it should be like 12 or 13 by the time I get back. Still at the summit here, just 30 minutes later. And <laughs> got lucky with that weather window, really did. So just hiking down the mountain now, my shoes have come undone three times, always the same shoe. I'm hiking down with these nice people. I'm sorry I didn't get your names. Joseph. Rebecca. And uh, yeah, just having a laugh with my shoe. And the weather has somehow turned from snow into hot sun again. Those two are super nice. We chat all the way down the mountain. And uh, they gave me one really good tip. If you encounter a grizzly bear and there's a big tree and a flat area around it, you can just run circles around the tree to potentially uh, get the grizzly off of you. Eventually, hopefully, they get uh, too annoyed and tired and they just it's not worth their time and eventually they'll leave you alone. So I thought that was really interesting. Stay away from grizzlies though if you can. Back of the car now, uh, it was about 1400 calories burned and 2700 feet of gain. Fantastic mountain. I'm told though if it's uh, sunny you need proper sun protection. This is my first stop in Utah. I'm heading to, I don't know where next, probably down to Provo and doing another mountain there and then doing some of the arches and trying to get a permit for Angel's Landing. So if you like mountain adventure content, that's what I'm providing here as well as um, gear review and some other stuff. So if that's your jam, hit the like button, subscribe. Until the next one, have a great day.